What's up, Collider fans? Big changes coming to Amazon Studios. We'll talk about what the latest news means next. Jeff Snyder here, joined by John Roca. Hello, everyone. John, reports from the trades coming out, I guess this started over at Screen Daily, that mm -hmm. Jason Ropel, who's a big executive over at Amazon Studios, is uh, is stepping down. Yeah. And it, and basically, it's a signal that Jennifer Salke, who was installed as the top boss over at Amazon, uh, wants to move the company away from this art house fair that Amazon has been known for mm -hmm. and into more mainstream movies, doing more commercial stuff. I think that Jason probably saw the writing on the wall and, and decided to get out of there before he was let go. Um, the rest of the team is still in place there. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll be interesting to see if, if Amazon brings in a big executive like maybe a Stacey Snyder, who may not survive the the Disney Fox merger, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. What do you make of all of this, first well, of all? Well, first of all, they got to change that logo if they're going to go for more art house fair. We have to have explosions, superheroes, all this kind of stuff going on <laughs> behind it. But I also think this is an interesting move because it wasn't that long ago where we were asking ourselves how much of a footprint will Amazon Studios leave on feature films? And to see the fact with Manchester by the Sea and a couple of these other films, they obviously went more the art house fair. Maybe it was cheaper to produce. Maybe you'd, uh, you could, you know, like kind of break new artists. So that was a great way. And it matches the TV shows that they do as well, the shows that they do that are TV on that channel on Amazon as well. So it was an interesting game plan all across the board. Now, Netflix spending $8 billion this year, the studios, streaming services, all these kinds of things force you to kind of step up your game. We see Will Smith. We see uh, uh, Brad Pitt. We see Tw Quentin Tarantino or Michael Bay, rather, doing films on Netflix. So that forces Amazon Studios to kind of keep pace with this other streaming service. So to me, it makes sense. I think they can thank Jason. He moves on to other places. And then if they move Snyder in, it makes sense. But Snyder kind of walks that line because Snyder can get you big mainstream successes, but also Oscar-nominated films like The Post. So she has a good track record. I think the simple question that, that Jennifer mm -hmm. Salk and Amazon uh, brass are probably asking themselves are, where is the $100 million movie? Right. Okay, they have so much money, Amazon does, and so they can, you know, they can spend unlimited amounts on material, on talent. Right. When you look at the movies that Amazon has made, and I'm not saying, like, I'm glad that Amazon has been around these last few years. Like, right. they have they've made a bunch of movies. Uh, Manchester by the Sea, The Big Sick, those did... Solid box mm -hmm. office for the kinds of movies that they are. But when you look at the rest of this list, whether it's Wonderstruck, Brad Status, Crown Heights, Last Flag Flying, Wonder Wheel, mm -hmm. You Were Never Really Here, and Don't Worry, uh, You Won't Get Far on Foot, the two Joaquin Phoenix movies, Gringo, yeah. even the stuff coming up, Beautiful Boy with Timothy Chalamet, mm -hmm. the Suspiria remake, Life Itself with Oscar Isaac, another Woody Allen movie. I don't see where the breakout box office hit is there. Right. And that's what she is expecting. So Amazon is going to have to rebrand itself in the marketplace. They didn't, you know, this year they didn't even pick up anything at Sundance. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, everything that they saw, they thought, okay, we saw some nice movies that might play to some festival crowds, but nothing that's going to appeal to a wider audience. And that is what Jennifer Salke is being tasked with. Well, and that might have been the first sign for for anyone who was looking that a change was coming, that they didn't purchase anything mm -hmm. from there. Because they could have, I'm sure they could have purchased like five films from that uh, festival and been like, okay, we're going to use, we're going to promote these, distribute these, what have you, uh, for lower cost and then recoup what we can recoup. This is a whole nother, this is a, basically a sea change in philosophy. And so to me, I'm excited for this, but I'm afraid what could happen because the more you sink into something money-wise, the, lo the losses could be heavy. And so would this sink Amazon as a studio? Would they have to go back? That kind of stuff. So you take these chances, they want to expand, but they're expanding so quickly. I wonder if it's too fast. Amazon wants to be like Netflix <laughs> yeah, is what I'm basically. getting from this. Like, you know, Am the, the thing that really distinguished themselves from mm -hmm. Netflix is that Amazon was really focused on quality right. instead of quantity. Now they may have to ramp up its output, and that means likely the more shots you take, the mm -hmm. fewer are going to be home runs. Right. Um, but l just look at the talent levels. Netflix has had Will Smith. They've gotten Brad Pitt. Yeah. They get we big showrunners yeah. like Shonda Rhimes and Ryan Murphy. Like, yeah. what are the big names coming to Amazon? Like... You know, well, Woody, Woody Allen and Joaquin Phoenix, I don't think that's enough. Yeah, but they have attracted that kind of talent. Once right. money starts showing up, 
other talent that's more mainstream will be attracted as well. Will Smith didn't go, you know what? I'd like to do a Netflix movie. No, they said, here's our money. Here's how much we're going to pay you. Will you come do a Netflix movie with David Ayer, feature film director, and uh, Joel Edgerton, a feature film actor? So, yes, I'll Great, come well. jump on it. So, I think with the money, and Bezos ain't short of money. When this money exactly. shows up, he they're going to, bigger stars are going to come do it. Amazon, you're right. They, they have the checkbook, so bust yeah. it out. It's a, but it's about the kind of movies that they're that they were making and that they want to make going right. forward. Um, and it's, you know, like when Jen got that top job in February, she came in and said, like, Jason's doing, this is a quote, Jason is doing a great job in a challenge business that's evolving every day. Mm -hmm. it, it just seems like it has sort of evolved out from underneath him. Yeah. Um, I think that the kinds of movies that Amazon makes are better suited for the A24s of the world. Yes. And yes, yeah, so you're, you're going to basically see Amazon make a real concerted push into more mainstream commercial fare, less uh, auteur driven stuff, probably more talent driven. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Th I think Which that's it. You know, it could be kind of a shame, but we'll see. You know, the, I don't know. I, I, I think the more we, we go into that realm, we'll lose some of the great art house films, and, and that could be a shame for cinema or, or, the, or, or another distributor will pop up and sort of become their, that new home. Yeah. You know, it, those movies aren't going away. Like, there will always be people who want to who want to make those movies and right. who want to see those movies. Um, but I think that Amazon sort of needs to evolve and... Uh, so, guys, let us know what you think about this. Are, are you worried about some of the art house movies that, that Amazon makes and that the fact that you may not get as many of them uh, anymore? Uh, what do you think that this means for the, just the, the film distribution landscape in general? Leave a comment. Make sure to like and share this video on social media. And subscribe to Collider Video for more like this.